Mark Sanchez in London, staying in London, 10-year career, Fox Sports. But first of all, um, I watched the game this weekend. My takeaway is if you compared it to five to six years ago, it looks like London and Europe is way more into the NFL. That was my interpretation. That stadium was packed. Your thoughts? They were rocking. And it's so funny. Um, Well, I think the NFL does a good job, you know, with the – publicity for it the PR team you know coming out here and you should have seen all the stadium graphics and they had it dialed in you can tell this is a first class operation but the fans you nailed it they're they're really starting to uh embrace this sport that we love across the pond you know and so they um you see, you get every uh, all 32 teams are represented a million different eras and generations of football cuz you get somebody you know, wearing like old school Joe Montana jerseys and Dan Marino jerseys. And then you get people that are, you know, Vikings, Justin Jefferson that are from, you know, right around Tottenham Stadium, you know, not from Minnesota. And uh, it it was interesting, too, to hear (laughs) usually like the kicks in most, um, you know, NFL games back home. They're, you know, they're kind of silent. It's a quiet play. You get a chance to say what you want to say, but punts, kickoffs, you know, (laughs) field goals, all that. (laughs) Everybody's like, oh! Right. No, I mean, listen, (laughs) they like our football. We increasingly like their football. I love, I kind of like the symmetry of it. So, first of all, you're a former Jet. I thought Zach Wilson had a great fourth quarter for the Jets. I thought it was big for Sala. I thought there's a lot of buy-in when I watch that. And I, I came out of that weekend, and I'm like, listen, it may not feel big to anybody else, but in New York, beating the Steelers in Pittsburgh and Mike Tomlin, yeah. that felt pretty big to me, Mark. No, that was a big deal. I just don't want him to get, you know, don't start drinking the Kool-Aid now. That's you too, Colin. So my man, J-Mac, I know he knows the Jets, but I want to take you to this play right before halftime. And this is a theme I see with Zach and something he's got to clean up, just absolutely has to eliminate from his game. But you got 33 seconds left. It's third and 11. You have two timeouts right here. And he throws that ball into a defensive team meeting. Are you kidding me? Like, absolutely not. And listen, I've done the same thing in my first two years playing. I know exactly – this is probably why I can't coach because I would absolutely lose my mind and go choke the quarterback on the field. Like, you, here's the problem. One, you have so much time. The, the time is more important. The timeouts are more important. The situation trumps this entire read. I don't care if we get the first down. You can scramble – you can do whatever. You're already in field goal range. Get a couple more yards, make it an easier chip shot field goal. But the fact that we're going to put this anywhere near a defender, absolutely not. And on the coaching staff, most importantly, if you know he plays like this and he's not ready to handle this situation, protect him from himself. Call a timeout. Burn one of the timeouts. You have two, right? So before halftime in these situations, you get two timeouts. One's for the kicking team. One's for the offense. You got to burn one on offense because something goes wrong or because somebody stayed in bounds and you got to stop the clock, burn it. Well, you have an extra one. So burn it, pull him to the sideline, grab him by the face mask. Hey, one thing we cannot do here, we cannot lose yards and we cannot throw an interception. We cannot give the ball away. That's it. Bottom line on this play. I don't care if we get 11 yards or not. Yeah. Matters absolutely none. So those kind of things. But it's the same decision like preseason – making the move and getting hurt on the run. Like, dude, just get down. You don't have to prove anything to anybody. It's preseason. I I need you to play for the whole season. So little things like that, because let's just say Kenny Pickett goes in and throws one last interception, throws a touchdown, boom. You get beat by three points, and you had a free three points before halftime? J-Mac, you know how that that media would have eaten him a lot. It would have been an absolute hornet's nest. All right. And it would have been, you know – yeah, you have Giants. So, so you had Viking Saints. You stayed in London. You have Giants Packers. So you're starting to look at yeah. Packer stuff now. I, I've said this before. They've gotten some breaks. They play a young Justin Fields. Tampa doesn't have any of their receivers. Uh, this week, New England's down to Bailey Zappi and took them to overtime. Sometimes in this league, you get injury breaks. I look at Green Bay, and I find them to be a very one-dimensional team. That They're not going to play from behind. They, I, I don't think Aaron yet trusts the receivers. I get it. They're kids. But when you look at Green Bay, I, they're starting to look a little like Tennessee to me. Like, they can win and win a lot. But, boy, I don't feel like they're built for shootouts at all. Your thoughts looking at them. 
Well, I think, you know, Aaron even admitted it, that that's not a sustainable way to, to win games over the long haul. But the bottom line is they won the game, and they're they're talking about this from a winning perspective, right? Because if you, lo- you lose a couple of these games, then maybe these guys don't develop as quickly as you'd like, and they lose a little confidence, not not the quarterback, but the, the young receiving core. And we've seen this with Tom Brady, with Peyton Manning, with all the great ones. They last so long in this league that eventually there's going to be turnover in the wide receiver room, in the skill positions around them, and the supporting cast. So – then it becomes a time on task deal and understanding these situations. And I guarantee Rogers has those guys in the film room trying to figure it out. But it, I liken it a lot to, you know, um, Michael Jordan's like second three P uh, Kobe's second uh, version of title runs without Shaq. Right. Those guys like Aaron Rodgers screaming at the rap. Romo made a joke about it on the, on the broadcast, but I mean, he's screaming his head off at his second year center. Hey dude, Snap me the effing ball, right? Right. Well, people are like, oh, my God, I can't believe he talks to people like that. So my only thing is he's going to bring these guys along. But just like Kobe, just like Jordan, those guys aren't there to be your best friend, right? They're in the twilight of their career. They can still ball better than any of them to ever walk this earth. And they're trying to win again, you know, because now it becomes like this addiction. Like, I need this action. I need this win. And... um I need these title runs. And so I'm not here to make you feel good. <laughs> We're here to win these ball games. So it's never personal, but he can, he's going to be an asshole to these guys sometimes. And yeah. that's, that's just the way it works. Yeah. I mean, bottom line is show business, not show friends kind of thing. And, and you yeah. know, he's going to grind it out, but they, they got to keep that run game going. And then the faster they can mesh quarterback receiver, all that kind of stuff, the extra meetings, taking these guys through film, going through these situations, not just the ones they go through, but seeing other teams and having that situations real from around the league, like, hey, look at the, you know, um, Jets play before halftime. Look at uh, these guys in the third quarter, in the fourth quarter, two minute drill. Where did they screw up? Here's where you have to get out of bounds. Here's where you can stay in bounds. Here we don't have timeout, whatever. He's got to get those guys seeing the same way he does so he can really start attacking. Uh, we only have 30 seconds left. I don't know you're in London if you saw USC win. Um are you shocked they're five and zero? Dead serious. Are you surprised? Slightly, I'd say just a little bit. I thought they might have had like one maybe mishap or something. Or my only fear was like Oregon State sneaks up on them after they're riding high, you know, right. riding that wave of emotion, and then you go on the road to Corvallis, and I mean that's a that's a tough tough place to play. So uh, I'm I'm glad they overcame those things, and now it's going to be there's some big ones coming up on the schedule. Uh, we talked about you know UCLA, Notre Dame, uh, Utah. Those are those are some big ones. So we'll see how they uh, how they play when the lights get real bright. Yeah, he's not you know Brock walked in five and zero. Oklahoma's not doing well without him. That's a pretty good sign. They got a pretty no. sp- nah, not good. Yep, that's the breaks. Oklahoma. He came out to LA. It's a nice place to live. All right, Marky Mark, you're in uh, London. He is doing the Giants Packers, which I think is going to be a really competitive game. Fox Sports. Uh, you look great as always. Thanks, man. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.